Ladies and gentlemen, Ibrahim, Snoopy, Ahmed. Round of applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Beautiful. And he's very good with the camera. You do much of stuff. I have COS. <laughs> you know, um, so I understand you know you are you are a leading voice in Sudan. Tell us more about yourself and how you're using um, your voice, your visual voice, or you know, your vivid voice. Uh, to tell stories. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, my name is Ibrahim Snoopy and I'm a film director, cinematographer, editor, you know, the usual stuff you <laughs> have to do to provide yourself. Yeah. And um, I co-founded in Deep Vision in 2015. Uh, it's a pro small production company in Sudan uh, doing, you know, cool stuff, videos, music videos, short films, advertisements, you know, just um, my main aim is to do films, but you know, films in Sudan doesn't pay. I don't know the right term. Um, I'm gonna show you why. Mm -hmm. So we have to go like do other stuff just to you know make it work and buy new equipment and stuff. So basically, for the past thirty years, uh, the Sudanese government's main goal or target is to do <coughs> is to destroy arts. Whether it's music, theater, uh, films, artists, artisans, everything. They, their main goal is to destroy arts. Mm -hmm. So that puts a lot of people into, you know, just being, you know, uh, what do you not mean knowing by what's destroy arts? What is so what do you mean? basically, if you're an artist over there, they'll try to, they will try their best not to make you work in the things that you love to do. Is it based on the content you're putting out? No, just general? like in general, whatever, if it's just music, they have to destroy you, phones, they see it as something that's opposing their agenda. There are Islamists who are the main target just to destroy you. So basically, if you want to go and do, shoot a film down the streets, for no reason, they just put you in prison, which happened a lot to me and to my fellow filmmakers. So with that happened, a lot of um, uh, subjects, you know, developed during their oppression, such as um, genocide, you know, uh, uh, FGM, you know, uh, underage marriage, and a lot of stuff. With that happening, uh, Filmmakers uh, try to put those um, uh, cases into the screen, such as the movie Beats of Antonov by Hajuj Kuka in 2014. It talks about the ongoing war in the West region of Sudan. Uh, also, a uh, film like uh, You Will Die in 20, talking about social stigma and uh, what's it called, uh, stereotypes that's happening in the society. You know, a film called uh, Cartoon of Sight, it's a film about girls struggling just to play soccer. Mm. You know, a film called Co Talking Trees, also a film uh, talking about um, filmmakers who are struggling just to get a small screening in their neighborhood. A film called I'll Sit, also by Suzanne Merlini, which is over here. <laughs> also, you know, all of these films talk about, you know, the people. The, the what's happening in the society that's the only way that we can tell the world what's happening you know through films through music to articles stories and those kind of ways so um, that's it <laughs> i'm stumbling here no you're not stumbling <laughs> you are hitting the right way um uh and I, and i like that you know i like that you guys have that vision um in the sense that but i i, I I also believe that it's still challenging. You know, you talk about her film that she's done. I don't know how she's promoting it and where she's promoting it, um, but it seems like it's a struggle to promote it in Sudan. So, what are some of the alternative uh, ways that you guys are using right now? Well, the easiest way to promote your films through social media because uh, it's the most effective. 
platform, you know, in Sudan, whether it's Facebook, Twitter. Sudan is still based on Facebook. You see a lot of people still using Facebook in Sudan. So whether you post anything about cinema, people re reach out and start asking about it if you know the right people. And saying the right people, that means just, you know, people who are around the industry and have a lot of buzz around them. I don't know if it's the right, right. term. Yeah, you know, right. that's how we promote films. You, you can't just go out there and print your poster on a billboard. That would cost you more than your film. Right. You know, and if you want to go to the TV, I mean, the old regime is still controlling the TV, so they will come and bug you. And you don't want any kind of disturbance right. after you produce your films. One great example uh, of Sudan Merlin's film, which went on to, uh, it had great distribution, I think, and it all went on to win over 50 awards around the world. And wow. that generated a lot of buzz, and not to herself only, but to local Sudanese filmmakers. But because a guy like me who's based in Sudan, and you know, sometimes it's unclear where the industry is going. Right. So when I see a film like this going, being made in Sudan, and getting international recognition, that gives me hope and my fellow filmmakers also hope that we can reach out. And through films such as uh, Talking Trees, the films that I mentioned, and also uh, Hajuj, and all the films that filmmakers are doing, uh, they, are, they have two things in common. Uh, first, talking about social issues, and second, which is, yeah, to some filmmakers, that's the most important thing is that they all got a lot of international awards and prestigious awards from Venice to Cannes, even like the latest film called The, the Dam, I guess, it's like officially selected in Cannes Film Festival and it's a Sudanese-Lebanese uh, film. And there are also a lot of filmmakers, uh, international filmmakers that are reaching Sudan these for the past two years. I've collabor collaborated in a couple of films such as uh, Ricardo Preve is an Argentinian filmmaker. He has a film that talks about uh, Dr. Abraham Rosenwasser. He's the uh, archaeologist that did uh, saved some of the things uh, that belongs to the museum. I, I can't remember the right term. And also the recent film that I collaborated in with a, new, a Tunisian uh, filmmaker called Hint. It's called um, uh, Bullet Don't Kill, Silence Will. That's the translation of the film. Uh, a film that talks about the Sudanese revolution. Okay. So you see that uh, okay. in, 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 if you can, uh, in, in short term, anyone who collaborates or do films in Sudan, it automatically will, you know, get international recognition, uh, got awards, selected in multiple uh, festivals, and that, which, you know, add more, add into giving hope to, to the to filmmakers, local filmmakers. What I try to do also, personally, I try to collaborate as much as possible, right. whether it's with local filmmakers, with international, whoever I can reach, so that, um, just to give filmmakers the idea that, you know, although Sudan is, is a little bit rough and the government isn't supporting us, it's opposing us, you can still make it. I mean, me reaching here to this room today proves that you can make it, you know, coming from the ghetto and then suddenly in Cannes. A lot of people didn't even believe that wow. I can make it here. I didn't believe that I can make it here. <laughs> suddenly, like, I'm in Paris and eating croissant. <laughs> you know, two days ago, I was just with flip-flops and Sudan with no electricity, but, you know. <laughs> So that's why it's all about giving hope and the way I see the Sudanese filmmaking industry, it's rising and it's rising fast because two weeks ago an, an international standard uh, cinema has opened, you know, with Dolby uh, Audio. Wow. You know, and another one two days ago also it has like, you know, standard uh, screening. You know, that as a filmmaker, I, I don't want to do anything in my life just to tell stories. First. Right. So when I see that happening, you know, I get happy. Right. You know, seeing people like Susanna, like Amjad, like Kofdefani, even Fatma Ned, she, she, she's one of the best people you can meet in Sudan. Uh, uh, everybody yeah. knows her. And she supported 
a lot of filmmakers, even me myself, she supported a lot uh, into giving me ideas and telling me how the industry works. Because in Sudan, we don't have uh, what's it called, like uh, establishments where you can study film right. or get ideas. You just have to get it by your own way. So there are no institutions, there's no, no school. There's right. no. Um, I've checked a couple of times uh, local universities, but the curriculum is too, too, you know, outdated. And they even like use the software that we used to use 15 years ago. <laughs> you know, I don't want to. You know, <laughs> I understand. But, I understand. Yeah. So you have to be outdated, like right. this guy said. You have to be fast and efficient yeah. and up updated. So some of one of the reasons why we still use old software also because of the embargo you know, sanctions. Mm -hmm. I can't, even if I can afford the latest Premiere Pro uh, version, I can't pay because we don't have visa. And if the visa, can, if I can pay it, I can't update it because, you know, the internet you have problems. And wow. stuff. So we crack it all the time. You got to find a way out. <laughs> um, I hope that, that that ends soon. You know, I want more people to to see to see the potential of Sudan, to see uh, to invest in the filmmaking industry. You know, we have you know Sudan is so big. Even to me, I've went to a couple of uh, places outside of Sudan, and it's still you know I, I, every time I get fascinated by how this country is big, you know, right. we have a lot of uh, lands, you know, a lot of cultures, a lot of tribes, resources, lot of food, resources, mm -hmm. you know, you can spend 10 years in Sudan and still you didn't even discover 10% of it, wow. you know, so that's why I try to encourage people to come to visit Sudan, you know, invest in films, mm -hmm. see the stories, you know, and also from our side as filmmakers, try, I try as much as possible to encourage local filmmakers mm -hmm. to, to reach out, you know, as much as possible to tell them the ways how they can finance their film. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just have to go, you know, guerrilla and then guerrilla style, yeah. guerrilla style you yeah. know, that's how I do it, you yeah. know, uh, crowdsourcing, <laughs> yeah. you know, reaching people, even if they reject you the first time for not believing in you, you right. should try push and push more Absolutely. and more Absolutely. the next time because Absolutely. you reach a level um, I don't want to say like me, right. but you reach a level where people believe in you so much that they want to collaborate with, with you, you right. in any kind of way. Two days ago, I was uh, reaching this storyboard artist and I was telling him like, uh, how much do you charge for, like, what's the criteria for mm -hmm. it? He was like, I charge $150 per page and stuff like that. But he asked me like, whose project is it? And I told him it's mine. And immediately like, hey, I'm not charging you anyway. It's all, all it's an honor just to work with, with you. you. So yeah. that's why I try. Uh, at the beginning, I didn't have that luxury, you know, just like borrowing cameras. I didn't have an edit editor, and I struggled to find an editor. Mm -hmm. And sound was lousy, you know. But the, you do, you just have to trust the process, you know. Every time you develop, you see your flaws and then you fix it and you know develop yourself until you reach a point where now I'm I have the tools the brains now I just have to make magic exactly i like that i like that i like no that is a round of applause like, it's not done but so you see i wasn't wrong when i said you 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 make magic with a camera um so but that's that's very interesting but and also i like the fact that we can actually see progress you know um, you know, for the likes of Suzanne, right? Yes, um, and others, you know, who are creating um, and creating opportunities. You know, you just said that you have two cinemas, you know, in Sudan right now. So that means that it, that it's, 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 it's a gradual process. It's, it's, it's trying to find its own way to shape it up. Um, but do you think you guys will be better off working as a collective, as a team, to really enforce this change and then also, how can um, you talking for, you're, you're talking about partnerships, investments, you know? And earlier on, to you mentioned about how you know the big G is trying to sabotage and uh, the industry. So as a as a as a as a as an investor, you know, I rather take my money to Ethiopia or I take my money to Ghana, you know, somewhere else or Nigeria where I know the market is there, I can make numbers, you know. So how my question will be how can you 
you know, you don't necessarily have to convince a partner, but then how, how, how is that going to play out? I mean, are there, are there, because there's obviously investment came in to build those cinemas, right? So there is, it, there is the opportunity, there is, there's a, there's a way for it to be, to, to, to work. And, and how is that coming out? Well, um, first, uh, it's always great to work as a team because, you know, you can't do it by yourself. And even if you can, you just ha you'll be stuck in a certain level. Mm. So definitely working as a team, that's the best option. And even I wouldn't be here if I don't have a, a solid team, you mm. know, just to help me doing stuff. And also, uh, the, what was the second question? The question was about the government um, mm. sabotaging and the investments coming in. You know, how do you even you know, convince the investor because you have that issue? You know, because I don't come and put money in there and then not be able to yes. see returns. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the greatest example is the films that are made right now. Okay. And as we speak, there are seven feature films in development, you know. And that shows that there are investors over there that are already, already invested in okay. films. Okay. Uh, I, I know most, some of the films and some of them I don't, which proves that there are people working in the industry okay. and then producing films. If you're an investor and you're afraid that um, what will happen yeah, with your money, basically, right. well, I can't guarantee you that something good will happen or not, but you know, you can wait a little bit and watch these films get out and then you can be certain that your money will, you know, what will happen mm -hmm. with your investment. But, but by the time that you start to believe it's already late it. yeah. because now it's growing and the best time to invest in a thing like the NFTs is early. When you invest early, you can guarantee that, you know, you grow and the industry grows with you. Absolutely. If you come late, you can't, I mean, like everything ha that happens around the world, when it's, you know, young, it's, you know, solid and right. the story is great. Right. And like I said, the films are, are already winning. Right. So let's say uh, in two years, three years, there will be just, just like um, commercial movies, movies with no meaning. And by that time, you won't be happy, you know, investing right. in, you know, stories that are not relevant. So right now, there are a lot of stories in Sudan, even myself, I don't even know know, know them. And every day I discover more great stories awesome. that I see that they can be great in film, whether it's in short film or feature film. So that's why I'm encouraging people. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Ibrahim, a.k.a. Snoopy. <laughs> um, this, this, I think I think your story is, is, is great and we need more like you, especially from your country, Sudan. Um, to 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 uh, to continue fostering this agenda because it has to be a win-win situation so that you know you can we can all be proud of what you guys have because you cannot put in so much work you know I'll, I'll use my country as an example you know Ghana we put it in so much as creatives you know the government system is not really there you know it's they try to do something but it's not really there at least they're not stopping us but they've opened the doors um, however, for example, Ghana right now, our, our focus from the National Film Authority is to invite more investors to come to our country and shoot. And why do we want them to come? Because we believe we have, um, as far as locations are concerned, we have one of the best in the world. So we have resources, we have, you know, great landscapes, we have, you know, um, you know good food, the culture, the nightlife. You know, so why can't we do that? I just did uh, a producer uh, with uh, um, uh, a, a creative from uh, from LA called uh, Nathan Fullen. Uh, he's called Worldwide Nate. He does um, uh, this um, uh, documentaries and a TV series uh, showcasing Africa from his lens. You know, so he did South Africa and then he was in West Africa this time around. Uh, my PM is here, my production manager, Basira, she worked on that project. You know, females, <laughs> empowering females, I like that. Um, and, you know, it was a good thing, collaborations, uh, you know, and that's some of the things that, some of the ways that I believe you guys can break out of that shell because it's really helping, uh, especially with, um, 
with uh, 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 coming to Africa that we did, you know, we spoke about that. By the way, my director said he's definitely put you in the part two to work with him, you know, so <laughs> I think that's really good. And we need more of that, you know. But anyway, thank you very much, Snoop. Uh, where can we find you? Social media handles, website, yeah, anything? Uh, uh, I'm all, all over Facebook, you know, because, you know, Sudan rely on Facebook a lot, so mm -hmm. definitely can that's find right. me on Facebook, Brain Snoopy. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. One of the things that I want to mention is that uh, during the pandemic, two years ago, uh, I started to read a lot about Pan-African, uh, like Kwame Nkrumah, right. you know, Patrice Lumumba, uh, Thomas Sankara, Julius Nyerere, and yeah. all of these guys. So, and I find that, uh, you know, one thing in common, that they love their country and they died for it yes and that's the, the the mentality that i have you know your country won't be developed you know no one will build your country you have to love yourself accept yourself your country your people in order for it to develop that's how i'm thinking as uh, and also in cinema you know if i think um in uh in a personal way, like I can travel, whatever, you know, as a filmmaker, travel, go build, uh, live outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can benefit for yourself, but what's going to happen to the industry? A lot mm -hmm. of people, they won't be losing hope, but less hope will be there. So as a filmmaker, as a Sudanese filmmaker, I feel like there's a responsibility towards the community, towards all the filmmakers, people, young guys, mm -hmm. especially the young dudes in mm -hmm. Sudan, because, you know, sometimes, they are, you know, hopeless. So I try to push as much as possible hope to the community, to the industry, in order to, for them to believe that Sudan will be, you know, going somewhere you know, with, uh, with everything that's happening. happening right. So the number one thing that I want to tell people that they should love their country first and their nation. And that's the thing that you said five minutes ago. You you also try to push investors to see what's, mm -hmm. what Ghana has because you love your country. Right. I know that you had millions of opportunities mm -hmm. just to travel to Europe or America, but you, you you wanted to stick in your country because you want to develop it, develop the industry, you want to tell stories, Absolutely. great stories that are, haven't that been silenced for the past 50 years, and it's about time that it should be out. So, and also i like to mention um, these guys, can you, can you put the, the first, Stop. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah, can I just tell you, I made a film in Sudan. I made a film on Alec West. Okay. A supermodel in Sudan, and we went back to Sudan, and we worked in Wow, I was a drinker. Okay. It was the BBC, it was just to become well. And it's an extraordinary country. I mean, where are you from? It's in from Khartoum. You're from Khartoum. Yeah. Because it was still not divided when we were there. Yeah, like ten, to more than ten years ago, right? Okay. 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 Um, Alec Wex High, so we went to see Alex home, and he came with us. Wow. We're proud of the country. That's cool. But, That's really cool. Um, it was an amazing experience. And then I had a second experience in Sudan, where I have a foundation called Films Without Borders, and we asked this boy from Sudan was going to come. We have a group of people flying to New York. And we were going to take this boy from Sudan. And I said to the boy from Sudan, remember you are an ambassador for your country. You behave like an ambassador. So he got to, um, he had to fly from Sudan to somewhere else. I think it was Kenya or well, Kenya to get into America to fly to America. Connection. Yeah. And he got there and he spent all this money. we have given him all this money. You could only buy the ticket at that time outside Sudan. So I said, well, where's all the money gone? He said, you told me to act like an ambassador, so I gave him the best <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Because so, that's what he knows. The ambassadors and yeah, the government yeah. officials, they live in the big They spend a lot of money. They spend a lot of money. So over here, uh, these are the guys that are every day on the front lines. So I have to salute them and pay them respect. Every, there are ongoing protests in Sudan okay. every twice a week, you know. Okay. So these are the guys that are every day on the front lines, you know, facing bullets, facing tear gas, all kinds of, you know, atrocities made by the police. So they they are the guys that are giving us filmmakers and the rest of the people space 
So you can do their stuff. So I have, I have to mention them from you. So can you translate that? So غاضبون بلا حدود that means in a way that we're just like niggas with attitude. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so in that sense, yeah. so, so like angry without borders, yeah. but doesn't make sense. You know? Okay, so that so, was like an NWA. Yeah, NWA. <laughs> yeah, and also the second photo, uh, boss. Sam, Sam. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, this is the photo that won best photo in Africa, made by my friend Faiz Abu Bakr which is a girl returning back at tear gas, mm -hmm. you know, to the police. And that shows, you know, how people are still struggling, fighting, you know, because we don't want to be, uh, you know, captivated. We want freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of everything. And you know how it is. And the last photo, oh, this is basically a meeting with some of the best people in the filmmaking industry about our upcoming film, which talks about um, female detainees, you know, during the revolution. Right. So we wanted to uh, do a short film about girls that went in, in uh, got detained, and how they act with themselves and the humanitarian side of them, and how they, you know, support each other, uh, you know, emotionally. So this uh, maybe uh, her face isn't that uh, shown, but she's one. She's the lead female actress from the film You Will Die in Twenty. You know, and some of these guys are the best in their uh, profession. So like I said, like crowdsourcing. You know, we have the art director over there. He's like one of the best theater uh, directors. So we wanted his uh, assistance on you know. Uh, training the girls, how they act, you know, and staging all of that. This is the director, Yasser. This is the assistant, and that's me trying to look professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for this question. If there's any question. Yeah, no, just a comment. So, I represent an organization called Global Film Media Initiative, we're running right now pitching um, and script writing on Zoom. Yeah, I'll participate in it also. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say that we're uh, fi finalizing the pitching version component in the next two weeks, and there's some fantastic projects coming out of it. Also, this film is one of the films I that are in I, I book, yeah, yes, the yes, Hanamiya. Exactly. Yeah. So um, there will be this quite a number of awards, uh, perhaps more than in relation to the films there. But I think it's an interesting opening because uh, what we realized is a lot of the, because you have sort of two types of filmmakers. You have the filmmakers who actually know the international market. Um, and then you have filmmakers who have never been out of the country. And there's a long road ahead. And it's, it's, it's amazing the energy that is being put in to bring the stories out. And the stories are fantastic. So if anybody's looking Thank for uh, co-productions in Sudan, let me know, not just put in touch with the filmmakers. Okay. One last thing, I have to thank the lady that made everything possible and if it wasn't for her, I would have been here. PK. <laughs> Applause for PK. Woo! I call her PK. <laughs> well, PK, PY, and Snoopy, that sounds like a, a collaboration. <laughs> no, we'll probably have to bring Helen in for that because she loves the peas. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Snoop, and um, uh, definitely we look forward to major projects, and then we we'll definitely continue with the conversation. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Round of applause. Round of applause. That was really lovely.